Greetings and welcome. I'm going to give you my take on the solutions to the Lecture 7 review questions, if interested. And you can compare my results to yours. So this ostensibly, this review session dealt with a data set that was a real data set based on 106 IT, ICU admissions of persons who were, had sepsis at the time of admission. This was in a single U.S. teaching hospital. And this was from a published paper that used uh, to estimate a multiple logistic regression to estimate the association between death in the ICU and patient level characteristics. Ostensibly, if certain things stood out as predictors of death that would allow for better triage of patients in sepsis. So the predictors we have include the patient's age, which ranges from 17 to 92 years in these data, whether the patient was in shock at the time of admission, whether the patient was malnourished at the time of admission, and whether the patient was under the influence of alcohol at the time of the mission. Ultimately, 20% of these 106 patients died while in the ICU, and the resulting regression equation relating the log odds of death to some of these, these predictors looks like this. The log odds of death is equal to some intercept, negative 8.6 plus the slope of 0 0.08 times age and years, plus a slope of 3.7 times an indicator of whether they were in shock or not at the time of admission, plus a slope of 0.8 times an indicator of whether they were malnourished or not at the time of admission, plus a slope of 3.1 times an indicator of whether they were under the influence of alcohol at the time of admission. So what does this intercept of negative 8.6 estimate? Well, it literally is the estimate of the log odds of death for subjects whose x's are all zeros. So that would mean people who are zero years old not in shock, not malnourished, and not under the influence of alcohol. So this group doesn't exist. We don't have any newborns in these data. So this is just, again, as we've seen the intercept to be in many cases where at least some of our predictors are continuous, the intercept is just a placeholder, but we need it to specify the entire line. So this log odds estimate for this one group is a placeholder. So the standard error for the slope of shock is 1. So I wanted you to report the estimated odds ratio of death for patients in shock at the time of ICU admission compared to patients not in shock at the time of admission adjusted for the other predictors in the model and also the corresponding confidence interval. So the slope of shock should give us the adjusted log odds ratio. It's the difference in the log odds of death for people who are in shock versus not, all other things being the same. So if we have this log odds ratio of, more t of death for those in shock compared to those not in shock adjusted for everything else is 3.7. If we exponentiate this, we can get the estimated odds ratio, e to the 3.7, it's approximately 40. This says that after adjusting for age, malnutrition, and alcohol usage, those patients in shock had 40 times the odds of dying in the ICU compared to patients not in shock. Well, this is certainly only based on 106 people, so there's some uncertainty. So to get the confidence interval on the slope scale or the log odds ratio, we'd add and subtract two standard errors, which would give us an interval from 1.7 to 5.7. And to get the confidence interval for the odds ratio, on the odds ratio scale, we'd exponentiate those endpoints, e to the 1.7, e to the 5.7, and that would give us a confidence interval, quite a wide range here, anywhere from 5.5 to 299. So at the population level, in this population of such patients, shock is associated anywhere with a 5.5 times the odds of not being shocked up to 299. That's clearly a very wide interval, not very precise, but perhaps the big message here is that even in the best case scenario, shock is quite bad, and that perhaps does not come as a surprise. The standard error for the slope of age is 0 0.03. What is the estimated odds ratio and corresponding confidence interval for the odds of death for two groups who differ by one year in age, adjusted for the other predictors in the model? Well. The estimated log odds ratio per one year of age, the log odds ratio of death comparing two groups who differ by one year in age is just that slope for age. 
the log odds ratio after adjustment for shock malnutrition and alcohol usage. And if we wanted to get a confidence interval for that, we'd add and subtract two estimated standard errors. And so this gives us a confidence interval for the log odds ratio of 0.02 to 0.14. Now if we want to exponentiate everything, the estimated odds ratio for the relative odds of mortality for one, two groups who differ by one year in age, adjusted for the other things, is e to the 0 0.08, which is approximately equal to 1.08. So an 8% increase in the odds of death per year of age. So what we estimate, the confidence interval on that, we'd exponentiate the endpoints of our confidence interval for the log odds ratio. So the confidence interval for this is e to the 0.02 is 1.02, e to the 0.14 is 1.15. So this result is statistically significant. We saw the confidence interval for the slope did not include zero, no zero, and hence the confidence interval for the exponentiated slope or odds ratio does not include one, but age could be associated, one year difference in age is associated anywhere from a 2% to a 15% increase in the odds of death. So Again, we only have 106 patients in this sample. There's a fair amount of uncertainty here. What if we wanted to compare two groups who differed by 25 years, say 65 years old and 40 years old respectively? Uh, what is the estimated odds ratio and corresponding confidence interval for the odds of death for these two groups, uh, 65 to 40, adjusted for other predictors in the model? Well, I'm gonna do this the quick way but you could certainly write it out the long way, too. You could uh, first figure out things on the slope scale. We had a, the slope of 0.08 and the confidence interval for the slope, and you could take each of these values, each of these values and multiply them by 25, which is the difference in age, and then exponentiate those to get the result. But since we already have things exponentiated for a one-year difference, I'm going to exploit the mathematics of this and say that if we did what I previously suggested, if we skipped a step, we could take our results on the odds ratio scale per one unit difference age and raise these to the 25 year difference age we have to get the resulting odds ratio for a 25 year difference in age and its confidence interval. If we do that, 1.08 to the 25th power comes in about 6.84, so this compounds pretty quickly over 25 years, and the confidence interval goes from 1.64 to about 32.9, so a fair amount of variability here. So we estimate that this 25 year difference compounds to a 6.84 difference, 6.84 times the odds of mortality for a 25-year difference, all other things being adjusted for, and that ranges from a uh, value of 1.64 to 32.9 uh, after accounting for sampling variability. If you did it this other way and you started on the slope scale and multiplied things by 25 and then exponentiated them, you're going to get slightly different answers here because I had rounded these values here. If you take e to the 0.08 power, it's something akin to 1.0321 something. And by rounding that versus if you took 25 times 0 0.08 and exponentiate that, you're going to get slightly different estimates. They'll be of similar magnitude uh, as these, but they may not occur directly. And that's just a rounding issue. Then I asked you to compare two different groups who differed on several predictors. I said, based on these results, what is the estimated odds ratio of death for 60-year-old patients who were in shock and malnourished at the time of ICU admission compared to 45-year-old patients who were not in shock nor malnourished at the time of ICU admission and neither group was under the influence of alcohol? So the first group, the 60-year-old group in shock and malnourished, if we were to write out their log odds of death for this group, it would be equal to the intercept, negative 8.6, plus our slope for age, 0 0.08 times 60, plus our slope for shock times 1, 3.7, plus our slope for malnourished, 0 0.8 times 1, and they are not under the influence of alcohol, so there's nothing there, 
If we do the math on this, this whole thing turns out to be 0.7. If we do it for the other group, 45 years old, no shock, no malnutrition, not malnourished. The log odds for this group equals the intercept, negative 8.6, plus 0 0.08 for age times 45. And they don't get anything, they're not in shock and they're not malnourished, so they don't pick up either of those. If we do the math there, this is equal to negative 5. So if we want to get the log odds ratio, we t uh, comparing these two groups, we could take the difference in the estimated log odds. 0 0.7 minus negative 0 0.5, which is 5.7. So the, the log odds ratio, comparing the odds of mortality in the ICU for these two groups who differ in age, shock, and malnutrition status, is equal to 5.7. To get the estimated odds ratio, we'd exponentiate the 5.7, and that gives an odds ratio of close to 299. So there's quite a, co a combination of these three effects going on, increased age, shock, and malnutrition. Now, if we wanted to get a confidence interval on this, we, uh, there's no easy way to estimate the standard error for this, and it doesn't come directly with the output from logistic regression, but you could get a computer to do that. If we had the standard error, we could c take the log odds ratio, add and subtract two estimated standard errors, and then exponentiate those endpoints to get the confidence interval for this odds ratio. Just one thing to note, if we had done this piecewise and taken the difference, the intercepts, that would be zero. If we'd taken the difference, but it was because of age, we'd end up with 0 0.08 times the difference in age is 60 minus 45 or 15. We'd then get the difference because of the fact the first group was in shock and the second wasn't, and we'd get the difference because of malnutrition. This sum of these piecewise differences on age, shock, and malnutrition adds up to the overall difference in the log odds of 5.7. If we exponentiate this piecewise, we get a function of the adjusted odds ratio for age times the adjusted odds ratio for shock times the adjusted odds ratio for malnutrition, and we get the same answer. Then I just wanted you to estimate the probability of death for 60-year-old patients who were in shock and malnourished at the time of ICU admission. So we've already figured out for this group that the log odds of death for this particular group for age equals 60 in shock and malnourished is the computation we did in the last slide. I'll just write it out for your reference. So the log odds for this one group was equal to 0.7. So if we know the log odds for this group, then the estimated odds of death for this group is e to the 0.7, which is approximately equal to 2. And so if we have the odds, we can estimate the proportion or probability of death among this group by taking the odds over 1 plus the odds, 2 plus 1, equals 2 thirds, which is approximately 67%. So we want to think, let's go back. I announced this without any fanfare, but it's pretty large, very over, pretty large age range, 17 to 92 years old. And the results I presented just stuck age in as continuous. So what is that assumption is that postulated on? when we estimate a logistic regression with age is continuous, it also includes the predictors of shock, malnutrition, and alcohol influence. Well, we're assuming, based on this structuring, that the relationship, the adjusted relationship, adjusted for shock, malnutrition, and alcohol uses, the adjusted relationship between the log odds of death in the ICU and age is linear in nature across that entire range, 17 
to 92 years. So what could you advise a, a researcher with access to these data to do to investigate the assumption regarding linearity in the adjusted association between the log odds of death and age? Well, this is an adjusted association, so we can't really look at a low S plot, that sort of scatter plot for the log odds versus age unadjusted, because that's not necessarily the relationship we're estimating here. It may differ after adjustment for these other factors compared to the unadjusted. So one, at least exploratory approach that could work and help to figure this out would be to break age into several categories, ordinal categories, and refit this regression model with the ordinal category representation and see if the difference from category to category with increasing categories is sim in the same direction and similar in magnitude. And if so, that would indicate that it was roughly linear on the log odd scale. So I did just this, just to investigate it. I took the age, and I was only 106 patients, so I split this into three groups, people who were less than 50, and that would be our, it turns out to be a reference group for the comparisons than those who were 50 to 60 years old and those who were then greater than or equal to 60 years old. And what I did was I made two indicators. I made designated the less than 50 as the reference group and I made an indicator X1 is an indicator if they were between 50 and 60 years old and X2 was an indicator if they were greater than or equal to 60. So let's look at this, the, the adjusted difference, everything else was included here. And you can see that some of the estimated associations changed slightly when we used age in this way as opposed to straight continuous, but the overall associations are similar in direction and magnitude on the log scale for shock, alcohol, and malnutrition. But so let's look at this. So this estimates the estimated difference in the log odds adjusted for other things between the 50 to 60 year olds to the reference group. And on the log odds scale, the log odds ratio is 0.7. That difference is 0.7. This next number estimates the difference in the log odds of mortality for those who are greater than or equal to 60 to the same reference of those who are less than 50. That's 2.7. So the jump from the reference group on the log odds scale to the next group was 0.7, but the jump from the reference group to the oldest age group was 2.7. So that means that the jump, if you will, here from the middle age group to the oldest was another 2. So while this is consistent in its direction, it looks like the increase accelerates the association between log odds of death and, and age increases with older age. So it doesn't appear that it is strictly linear across that entire age range. It looks like if we tried to, so what it looks like to me, very naively drawn, if we had three groups and we are looking at a log odd scale, something like that. And so before we were sort of interpolating one line across this entire, we didn't do, we didn't miss the overall picture, but we were probably overestimating the increase associated with age for younger ages and underestimating that for the older age. So based on looking at this, I would suggest the researchers keep age as categorical to better capture what's going on. So hopefully this was helpful, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.